Welcome to The Nation. Good afternoon. I'm Tamina Kaoschi, and today I have the pleasure of hosting Dr. Tesu Thai, who is the CEO of Global Peace Foundation Malaysia, speaking about a very pertinent clean water issue. Welcome to the studio, Dr. Tay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. It's Panama TV's pleasure. Now, before we get started off with um, the good work that Global Peace Foundation Malaysia has been doing, um, I'd like you to start off by telling us about the foundation itself, sir. Sure. Well, the Global Peace Foundation is an international peace organization. We have uh, 16 chapters from around the world, and Malaysia is one of the chapter. Um, this nonprofit of Global Peace Foundation uh, was established about seven years ago um, with a mission to address some of the most pressing issues that humanity is facing today. So our core uh, focus is in the area of promoting interfaith collaboration, um, addressing a lot of conflict um, because of um, identity-based base, uh, issues. Um, we are also working on, on the issues of education um, in order to nurture a, a more holistic uh, children uh, from, from the school. And the third area that we are working on is in terms of community building, promoting a culture of service, engaging young people in, in volunteering, and addressing issues that the communities are facing. Right, I see. So that does seem like a very uh, broad-based perspective on, as you said, assisting right. with issues. Yes, yes. Right. Um, even though, although we have a, a broad focus, but um, every of our chapters would identify some of the key areas uh, and key issues of a country. So in Malaysia, right. uh, we have mainly two areas of focus. So the first one is actually on education. Um, well, nurturing young people, you know, to be our future leaders is one of our our important mission. Because if you want a better world, uh, a more peaceful world for tomorrow, right, you got to start from the younger generation. So, so pro providing a leadership program, character building activities, working with the school, providing capacity building for teachers are some of the things that we do uh, in order to to nurture a better next generation. So, another area. Uh, it's what we're going to talk about today. It's, it's about addressing issues of a community and, and the area that we are, we are focusing right now is in terms of helping communities who are struggling with the issues of clean water. Right, yeah. okay, clean water. Yeah. Now, um, as you were saying, uh, uh, each country has its own focus. Right. Now, Malaysia and clean water, why is that still an issue of concern, especially in a tropical country, which uh, we are blessed mm. enough to have plenty of rainfall and right. etc. Why is that still an issue, sir? Yeah, um, I think a lot of people are not aware of how uh, communities in the rural areas right. um, and also um, especially Orang Asli's communities who live in, in the mountain, in the, in the jungle, uh, uh, many of them do not get uh, clean pipe water. I see. Uh, probably because of logistic and geographical issue and uh, a lot of these communities they are consuming water from um, the, the mountain like streams, river, and sometimes even um, you know, in, from a lake or, or well. So the issue right. of, <coughs> uh, we call them surface water. That's right. So <coughs> uh, the, the, the trouble with the surface water is uh, it can be contaminated. Uh, it can be contam contaminated because of animal activities. It can be contaminated because of logging, plantations, and so on. Right. So, um, so, so these communities um, sometimes face challenges, health issues. Kids get diarrhea, they get skin diseases. Um, but they have um, no way of, of, of addressing this issue because they, they don't have alternative source of water to drink. Right, okay. Yeah. So that's definitely something of great concern. Now, um, the Global Peace Foundation, uh, which you represent, of course, um, before we go into further details about that, sure. tell us about your involvement um, so far with the Global Peace Foundation, Doctor. My personal? Yes. Oh, <coughs> uh, I've started my, um, actually, I'm, I'm, I was trained in, uh, in medicine. Right. And uh, I found that I have uh, a great passion on social work, uh, even when I was in university. So uh, at one point, I've decided that 
uh, I want to do something that's connected to social good. Right. Uh, when the Global Peace Foundation was started in Malaysia, uh, I was one of the founding members together with a few others. So we started the foundation together. So uh, it's been about six years uh, since I was involved. Right, okay. And what have the six years of your experience within the NGO circle in Malaysia told you so far? What have you learned? Yeah, I, it's, it's a very interesting <coughs> um, career, you know, uh, as you look at it, right. in, a, in a non-profit sector. Uh, people of my generation um, would hardly think about working in a non-profit uh, That's say, right. Yeah, it's say, still considered uncommon. Right, right. Uh, well, today a lot of uh, Gen Y, you know, they have more exposure towards nonprofits uh, and, and they get to work and experience. Um, but when I when I move into a nonprofit sector, uh, it's a lot of uh, people were very curious. Like, you know, would you be able to survive? You know, doing what you're doing. Yeah. That's right. So, <coughs> but I would say I'm very blessed um, to be doing what I'm doing today. Over the last few years, it's been an experience of uh, working with people. It's been an experience of understanding the needs of a society, um, developing an empathy and, and, um, and creating ideas of how we can solve problems, social issues, how we can better nurture um, the next generation. So there's a lot of learning in the process. And, and because this is my passion, um, right. I, I never felt like this is a, a work. You mm -hmm. know, I just felt like this is my life mission and I'm, I'm very happy that I could, I could make a difference every day. Okay, that's lovely. I mean, a mission to really better the lives of others. Right. Now, in the work that the Global Peace Foundation Malaysia has done, um, what about it um, pointed you towards working for this waterfall campaign? Right. Well, the idea of this campaign um, was started in 2010. Uh, a colleague of mine, his name is Nicholas, he's, he's especially passionate about addressing issues of water. Right. Um, so, so, so he started to do a lot of research. A lot of, um, I mean, as usually we, we don't think it, water is an issue in Malaysia. We would yes. think that maybe Africa or Cambodia. That's right. Perceptually, <coughs> I think it's very low on the right, awareness right. level. Yeah, yeah. So even though it, it is not, um, if it's, it's not a serious, too serious of an issue, uh, as long as there are communities who are struggling with it, right. uh, we felt that we, you know, we got we to gotta solve this issue. Uh, personally, I've been to a community in Sabah it's just about <coughs> uh, 90 minutes from KK. Okay. Uh, but because of its geographical location, uh, it's very difficult to get in. We need four-wheel drive and all that. And of course, when we arrived there, um, the village heat is very warm. So he, he wanted to uh, give us coffee and all that. So, so he started right. to boil water. Okay. And he gave us option like, okay, you pick, you know, you want Nescafe or Milo, you have the three in one. So you can make yourself. It was rainy and, and we all wanted some hot drink. Um, and pouring out, you know, the hot water <coughs> from the kettle, I could see that yellowish water. Right. And, uh, you know, me and my friends, we struggle a bit. Like, should I drink this? You know, even That's though it's right. boy, it, it's yellowish. Um, but we, we, we drank it, we made uh, Nescafe out of it. But while drinking, you know, the Nescafe, we could still taste something weird in the water. Right, it tasted a bit <coughs> off. Exactly. So, so if we could not even tolerate, you know, this for a drink, just imagine people who live this day in and day out. Um, especially when it rains, a, a lot of these communities who, who uses rain, uh, uh, um, the stream water, right. the water get really muddy and, and murky and they had no choice uh, but to, to consume it, to drink it. So, uh, so if you look at this, um, you have cases of sicknesses as well. Right. Um, a friend of mine who told me that in, in a community uh, in Cameron, uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the village head actually died because oh the dear, water okay. that <coughs> he consumed was contaminated with uh, leptospirosis. Okay. The kind of bacteria the that came from rats. Yeah. So, so if you uh, just imagine you have children, 
drinking you know uh, water that uh, potentially is contaminated um, you're not gonna be feeling you know safe and you're gonna be worried every day that's right so 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 with that kind of um, empathy and understanding of the struggle of the this communities um, we deci decided that this is uh, an important project for us to embark in <coughs> um, and the, the idea is also to bring along uh, different different partners so bring in the corporate partners who will be able to sponsor or donate yeah, the water filter mm -hmm. um, looking for a good technology of water filter that would be you know fitting for the community right and also getting young people to come along to volunteer their time and energy and providing them an exposure and experience um, of how some of the underprivileged communities are, are living uh, so, so, so looking at all this um, uh, benefit that we can bring, uh, we decided to, to start this project um, in 2010. Right, okay. Now, um, let's backpedal and as you said, started in 2010. So this mm. Communities Unite for Pure Water initiative. Right. Um, what are some of the areas that you have successfully managed to address and also right. to um, ha make some change happen so far? Right, right. So. Um, we so far we we have piloted this project in two uh, different communities i see uh, we actually got started <coughs> uh, by doing this prog project in cambodia uh, we because globe peace has a chapter in cambodia and and from some of the statistics that they provide us the issue is really really pressing so we, we uh, by getting a, a local sponsor uh, we managed to have the first pilot project um, in Cambodia where we actually um, built you know a water filtration system and also uh, understanding you know understood how the locals are suffering from the issues of, of wa dr clean drinking water right so that was that was the first pilot <coughs> then soon after that while well, well, when we started to research about Malaysian uh, communities then we start to identify <coughs> the Orang Asli Kampongs who are uh, suffering from clean water. So we had our second pilot project in Goping, uh, Para. I <coughs> see. A community who have been consuming water from the stream and they, um, they're struggling because the parents were telling us that when they make you know, uh, milk for their kids, okay. um, they had to use a cloth to filter the, the water. water. Oh and dear. it's you can see dirt on on the cloth, and still it's not it's, it's, it's it doesn't solve the problem entirely. So so there were a lot of worrying parents and and sometimes kids uh, get sick and Naturally. so on. Yeah, yes. yeah. So that was um, our second pilot project, uh, working with a community called. Uh, Ulu Goro, Kampong Ulu Goro in Goping. In Goping, and which year was this, Dr. Tay? This was this uh, last year. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Nice. So, um, what was um, the Global Peace Foundation uh, able to do as their way of helping out the community in this area? Can you say again? Uh, what was the Global Peace Foundation able to do to help this community last okay. year? So what we did uh, was at first we went there to uh, recce uh, the, the situation, talking to the local communities, the, the village hate, right. um, understanding the seriousness of the issue. Uh, then secondly, of course, is to look at the technical side. Okay, they've got a, a need for clean water. Right. Um, but you know where do you want to put the filter um, would the community understand the importance uh, you know of 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 coming and and get the clean water from the filter creating awareness educating um, the parents and and besides that then is to work with a few engineers uh, in finding the right place <coughs> uh, to to locate to put the the water filter right the best place yeah the best place um, getting also the water source, you know, from the best uh, source of water, um, so that it, it it will fit in into the filter. Yeah. So so these are some of the work that was required. Um, at the end of the day, when you, we talk to the communities, right? Um, they're very happy. Parents are very happy because if you understand, uh, especially mothers who 
cokes and who that's right a daily basis yeah. potable water right yeah. now on that point we'll take a quick commercial break sure. and <coughs> when we're back we'll still be speaking about the issue of pure water stay with us Welcome back to the nation. Still with me, Tamina Kalchi, and now we're going to play you a quick video that will show you a little bit about the initiative by the Global Peace Foundation Malaysia. Check it out. penapis yang penapis teh tu kan ha, kami kami gunakan penapis kecil tu penapis teh tu ha, itu yang kami gunalah untuk air minum lah tapi kalau untuk air yang kami guna untuk membasuh apa semua kami tak guna penapis untuk kanak-kanak kecil apa semua untuk buat susu kan ha, kami gunakan penapis double lah kami double tapi memang betul lah dia, dia punya air tu memang kalau kita tengok dekat penapis tu dia ada macam gelodak kuning macam itu selalunya mereka tanya pergi, pergi ke klinik lah cek tu pas tu doktor tanya macam mana uh, situasi air. Ah uh, orang cakap air tu begini begini yang uh, airnya kotor so doktor cakap kena rebus dulu. Tapih dulu air tu baru rebus betul-betul masak baru boleh diminum. Nicholas Lee, I'm the project director of Community Unite for Pure Water. Today we are here to install the first MF system here to provide clean water to the community. If this village is just a starting point, our goal is to provide the whole entire Malaysia community to have access to clean water. Right, so Dr. Tay, as we saw in the video, it very succinctly tells us what the problem are of these communities, the Orang Asli communities. Right. Now, um, basically moving on from there, um, tell us a little bit, anything more that you can about that video before we move on into your collaboration with um, Lanish. Sure, sure. Well, that video um, is the, uh, the pilot project that we did in Gopeng Para. That's right. Um, in Orang Asli community, as you um, s saw the interview when we s spoke to them, you could sense that uh, it's, there's a worry about the health of the children um, and, and, and whether you know, anyone will get very sick. That's right. So, um, uh, uh, of course, they, they do not have many other options um, when their only water source is, is the streams that are coming down from the community. Um, and as I mentioned, when, when it rains, uh, the water, if you look at the water, you wouldn't think that this is, uh, this is something that you can drink. Um, but for, for a community like this, they have no other options. Um, the only filter that they could afford uh, is, is you know, cloth or the, the, the filter they use for tea and so on. So, so it took us um, about two months to, to understand uh, the, local, the local plight 
uh, we didn't want to do something that the communities uh, would not need. Uh, we would only go to communities that express uh, their, their, their struggles on, on the water right. quality. Yeah. So it took us two months to uh, talk to them, to educate uh, the communities. Um, to get agreement from the community, right? Okay. Um, then finally, um, we could uh, we could provide a filter, and, and to build a filter, it also requires some some process. You need to have to lay a groundwork of cement so that you can put the filter there. You need some piping work. Um, so we we managed to engage a group of young volunteers. Uh, many of them are university students. Right. Uh, to volunteer the the one day to be there. Um, not just helping to fix the, co the filter, but also to talk to the communities, have some program with the children. So this, this offer a great um, learning experience for, for young people um, to know that there's so much that need to be done and that they can do something for uh, communities like this. That's right. And the community engagement aspect mm. is also something I must commend GPF upon. What was the reception like from the villagers, the Orang Asli in Gopeng? Right. So the key here is that um, you need to create conversation with them. Right. Um, and, and the conversation uh, should not be, you know, here we are, we're going to provide you with the future and your life will change. You know, this would not work. Um, the conversation should be, you know, let, uh, tell us what what are some of your difficulties and and needs. You know, right. uh, practical how, yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah. How uh, how happy are you with your water? Um, how worried are you with with your water? Is there any cases of sickness and so on? So by engaging them to talk about their needs, their challenges, um, naturally they would they would tell you. Um, you know how much they actually need uh, solutions to their their water, so so you get buy in when people want want it themselves. It's not that we want to give this to you, but right. they are telling us that they need uh, better water. Um, so so when you do that, naturally you get better response, better buy in. Um, chances that they are going to maintain uh, this water filter is higher. And chances that they will, the families would come. You know, I mean, they have to still walk a distance to to collect the water. Right. So, so if you develop um, that understanding of the importance of clean water, chances is they will consume they will the utilize. clean water. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now that's wonderful. <coughs> now this is of course the first time that GPF is collaborating with Laniche Malaysia right. for this waterfall sharing campaign. Hmm. Um, now walk us through what this campaign with. Lanish is all about, Doctor. Yeah, yeah. So we are uh, actually very excited to uh, work with Lanish. Um, uh, Lanish is, as you know, they are a, a global uh, brand in in, in be, uh, beauty uh, products. So uh, when they when they approach us about this waterfall sharing campaign, um, we we were uh, excited because we already know uh, some communities who um, needed. Uh, clean water was struggling with with the issue of water so the waterfall sharing campaign uh, share the same mission with what we've been doing and that's to uh, provide clean water to underprivileged communities so so the the campaign um, has been launched in May uh, it, it's a three months campaign until July right um, and and Laneige goal is, is to raise uh, about 80,000 ringgit Malaysia uh, from the sale of the uh, uh, limited edition uh, bottle right. that, that comes yeah, with... So there you go. As we have been seeing, the water bottles displayed on our table here are not just for show, <laughs> but these are, as Dr. Tai said, the limited edition Laniche water bottles. Right, right. right. Yeah. Now, um, where are these mm. water bottles available for purchase for those who might be interested to assist? Yeah, um, as, as I was informed, the water bottles will be available at uh, all major shopping malls where Laneige has their uh, counter or, or they have you know, their, their sales outlets. That's right, and we're actually showing a close-up of each one of the different styles and models of the bottles available on the screen right now. Right. Um, they retail for individually? Um, for 10 ringgit. Right, so individually for 10 ringgit and uh, the 
profits would go to actually yeah. the sum that intends to be collected. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so the profit from this uh, waterfall sharing campaign is meant to uh, support the provision of clean water to two communities I see, that right. we have identified. Okay. And yeah. what was the process to which um, Laneige as well as uh, GPF went to identify these communities, Dr. Tay? Yeah, so uh, we have, we've got uh, uh, friends working with uh, Ora Asli communities. I see. And uh, through, through them, uh, and we, we get to know these two communities who uh, are more uh, desperate in terms of getting clean water. Right. So one of them uh, is located in Pahang. It's actually in East Coast. I see. It's a kampong called Kampong Binjai. And uh, the other one is in uh, Goping. Uh, right. Actually, it's, it's not very far from our first uh, uh, pilot project in Goping. I see. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, on these kampongs, individually, how many residents do they have, actually? So, uh, the one in Pahang, Kampong Binjai, it's a smaller community. They have right. about... 150 um, people living together. Um, the community uh, is is if you if you if you are there if you if you walk around you would know that they are they're less developed uh, than many other Orangsli kampong. Uh, looking at the way how they build their house and the infrastructure they ha they they have is so minimal. Right. Um, Very basic. Yes, exactly. I see. They don't even. <coughs> They don't have electricity and they don't have pipe water and they don't have a running water nearby. So the water that they are consuming right now uh, is from wells that they dig themselves. I see. Um, and, and, and they would also shower in, in a stagnant pond. Right. So this is a community that um, we, we were just very worried just looking at how uh, you know, they leave. Uh, the, the, some of the kids, you could see them developing, um, you know, white patches on the, on the skin. Right, skin allergies and uh, yeah, diseases. Yeah. And if you talk to the uh, adults, they would say, uh, you know, f f occasionally kids would get sick. Of course, maybe to them, they, they, they're used to that. But in long term, um, you don't know what what might you know happen to their health yes the immune system especially exactly exactly so that is uh kampong binjai uh, they 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 are uh crying out for uh, clean water uh, right. because the wells that the the duck um wouldn't would not last very long right um, especially uh you know when they when they dig a, a well after a few weeks uh the water uh, at f which at first is very clean will, will become very muddy. Right, that's because it eventually <coughs> mixes with ground water. Exactly, exactly. See, right. And they have to uh, dig another one, you know, and another one. And recently um, they, they dug a well in a nearby um, palm oil plantation. I see. So, right. uh, so far the water is clean, um, but uh, they are quite worried about um, you know, pollution or contamination from the palm oil itself because right, a lot I of see. this plantation uses fertilizers or, or maybe pesticides. Very true. Yeah. Now on that point, we'll take a quick commercial break sure. and when we're back, we'll still be discussing the issue of water access for the Orang Aslis. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Nation, still with me, Tamina Kaoji and Dr. Tay. So Dr. Tay, as you were saying, now the issue with having any water outlets in palm oil plantations would include? Well, it, uh, the, the possibility uh, that it can be contaminated or polluted uh, by chemicals from the plantation is, is high. Right. Um, because usually plantations, you might use um, uh, fertilizers, uh, or pesticides. True. So, so this community, Kampong Binjai in Pahang, uh, while they're drinking the water, and uh, you know, because it's 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 clear, it's, it doesn't look, um, you know, polluted deep inside their heart. They they are questioning as well whether this is safe enough to drink. Right. It's not just the color of the water, exactly. but the chemical content. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so a lot of time. Um, you know, if you look at the water 
uh, it can be very deceiving uh, just just to look you know uh, clear water doesn't mean is is clean it, it, it can have uh, uh, bacteria you know it can have chemicals and and so on very true yeah. and the other issue is that of course the orang asli need not just portable water but water that they can safely consume mm. for drinking for cooking for eating yes right yes now uh, moving along so this is how the orang asli in these um, areas currently get their water now what will change once um, GPF's um, collaboration with Laneige comes into effect right right so this collaboration um, is meant to raise enough um, fun to purchase the water filtration system right um, w we have been uh, scouting for uh, different types of water filtration system the last few years uh, and thankfully we found uh, one filtration system right. um, that is uh, being invented locally okay um, and uh, meanwhile first let's just cut oh, to okay. some slides that <coughs> we're actually playing on the screen sure. would you mind telling us a little bit about this Dr. yeah Tain? yeah so if you look at those pictures those are those are houses of the Oran Asli um, I would say majority of them are, are living in, in wood, wooden houses uh, and some houses are so simple that you wouldn't just imagine that it's for human being right yeah okay so basically these are the living conditions especially mm. of those in the areas targeted by global peace foundation as well as Laneige. yeah yeah and and this are um i believe this is uh in the uh uh this is the one in goping right um, yeah so this is the one with roughly 150 residents around yeah the one in goping has a slightly bigger uh, population they have about 300 right um, and uh, this is a picture of our pilot project uh, if you look at the installation of the filter it's not just as simple as bringing a filter and put it there um, you, you need to do a lot of groundwork um, that's right yeah the piping the cement work the foundation needs to be laid exactly the site needs to be chosen exactly and you want to make sure that you uh, build a fence around it um, because you're talking about drinking water so you, you you want to avoid um you know other people that can spoil it right yeah or, or even animals uh, that may come you know and and, and uh, exactly invade the space exactly right. yeah so all of these considerations of course are worked upon by your team of experts now getting back to what you mm. were saying dr tay the filtration system so what right. was the filtration system which yeah. Yeah. gpf and Laneige decided upon right right so um uh, from the project that we did in Goping last year, right. um, we, we found this water filtration system um, that is number one cost effective Okay. Uh, because you don't want to install a very expensive water filtration uh, for a small community. Uh, it's not going to be cost effective. Um, so, so number two is maintenance um, because understanding that this community's um, they, 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 they may not be well knowledgeable about how filtration works and how to maintain it. Right. So you want to have, have a filtration system that is very low in maintenance that you don't need to, to go and check it on, on it every day you know, and, and clean it uh, every month. You don't even need to do all those kind of things. Right, day-to-day um, -day maintenance might <coughs> prove to be a cost issue as well. Exactly, exactly. So you don't want, you want to minimize um, a human's uh, effort in this sense. Um, and then uh, thirdly, you want the filter to be good enough right. that it will filter off all the dirt, the particles, uh, harmful bacteria. All in one. Yeah, yeah, all in one. So, uh, so we found this uh, this water filtration system um, designed by a company, local company called Reviva. Okay. And it is called the Automatic Membrane Filtration System, in short, uh, AMF. So the good thing about the uh, AMF system is is that it has a membrane. Okay. Uh, that does a job, and the membrane is so good because the pores size of the membrane is so small that uh, all the particles, the dirt right. and the bacteria will not pass through it. Uh, so yeah. basically it would not be visible to the naked eye. Yes. yes. Right. Okay, excellent. And, and secondly, um, and the membrane is, is can last pretty long. 
uh, and it's easy to maintain. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll just pull out this this um, drawing of the filter. That's right. Okay. So um, um, Dr. Tay actually has. Um, a sample drawing of what the Aviva filtration system looks yeah, like. Yeah. So, so I'm not uh, an engineer, uh, right. but I'll be able to explain very briefly about how this works. So, right. If you could just hold it up a little bit, sure. so yeah. that yeah. it might be a bit more visible. Yeah. So, there if you go. look at this design, um, that's right. <coughs> there's there's actually two parts of it. The lower portion of the filter actually contains all the membrane inside, and right. the membrane uh, looks like a spaghetti. Uh, okay. It's so, so they are it is long and yeah, long and tiny right, inside. Right, I see, I see. And uh, and and the case, um, the the entire case is transparent. Okay. So so you don't have to open it to to check on it. So you can actually physically see. Exactly. So that's what cuts down the maintenance. Exactly. So you right. can physically look at it if if there's any issue with it and and so on. So the water source will actually come in um, from from the bottom, and and with some pressure. The water is pushed through the membrane. Right. That's how the membrane wa water is being pushed through it, and then the clean water will be accumulated on on top of it, and there's a pipe that connects it to the storage system. I see. Yeah. Right. So the <coughs> the most important feature that the reason why we pick up this uh, filtration system is that it has a um, built-in automatic backwash system. If you have used any filter at home. Uh, you would know that there are filters that you need to clean. You know, open right. out, you need know, wash it. They get all that build up inside exactly, them. Right. Exactly. Um, so, so the the system to clean it, uh, it's called it's called a backwash system. Meaning, you actually wash it from uh, inside out, right? To clean the membrane because after a while, uh, membrane will will be you know will be stuck with all the dirt. Mm. So what the system uh, is able to achieve is that they they have built in a backwash system that doesn't require electricity. Uh, we've seen many other models that require electricity, require manual work. It's, it's much more costly. So so this uh, system will give us what we need because when the membrane um, is dirty to okay. a certain extent, um, it will detect it by itself because the pressure between the inside and outside is different. So it will trigger off a mechanism that water will be pushed down right. to flush it. Okay. Yeah, wow, and the wonderful. dirty water will, will go out from a system. Right. Smart so technology. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's the reason why uh, we 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 have adopted this system. Right. And this Aviva filtration system typically costs eighty thousand ringgit. Uh, no, it w one piece of it will be uh, over twenty thousand. Okay, right. And that is in excluding um, other accessories that you need to have, like the water tank. Okay. Uh, the building of the foundation, the fence, and all that. So, so, um, so we estimate. Uh, one know, unit. One one unit in a, one community. Okay. You probably can uh, get everything done. Um, below below thirty five of, of you know thousand uh, Malaysian ringgit. Right, right. Yeah. So a conservative <coughs> estimate for two of such filtration devices would be roughly eighty thousand. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, typically speaking, Doctor Tay, um, one filtration system would be able to produce enough portable oh. water for how many? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the great things about the the AMF system is that it can produce up to 16,000 liters per day. Per day? Yeah. Wow. So, okay. so, so, so you're talking about mainly uh, drinking and cooking water. Right. Uh, that's actually more than enough for uh, a community with uh, 100 families, let's say. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, I mean, typically speaking, um, the average individual adult would need yeah. roughly between two to three liters a day. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that should be um, very comfortable, just nice for the communities that you're looking at. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so in summary, um, in, in considering the community needs, um, you got to find a low maintenance system, uh, cost effective. That's right. As, you know, produce uh, clean and uh, safe water for the community. That's right. So yeah. I think the reviver system it fits all those boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, installation-wise, um, who will, who are the teams or the people, the individuals on the ground actually in charge of the installation? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, to install the water filter in the community, 
um, there are many yeah there, there are a few other areas that we have to look at right um, and that's that's something uh, a bit technical like you know the water pressure um, and the locations is more central so that you know the entire communities will be able to access to it that's right um, so so we would uh, have discussion with the technical team um, of the water filtration uh, company you know uh, consulting their engineers about you know how does the pipe run and and how do you create a better pressure of you know uh, I incoming water and uh, getting the right size of water tank so you, after filtering you know you store it uh, right. for the consumption of the community exactly so it's yeah so there will always be a tank on standby at the side definitely right uh, in the Ko Goping community we actually had two uh, water tank I see. one is before filtering okay so if you if you're worried that the water source is not very constant <coughs> then you you better store it before okay. it's filtered right then after filter you you store it again for the community's uh, consumption I see yeah so the, the, the whole process involved um, a lot of collaboration naturally yeah. I can see that it is um, it's complex but at the same time workable yeah. right yeah okay so let's take a quick commercial break meanwhile and we'll be back after this shortly still with me Tamina Kalji and Dr. Tay. So Dr. Tay, as you were saying now, um, the projects are have been pr processed, they've been researched. Now what is the stage of progress so far? Right. So um, as I mentioned earlier, we are targeting uh, two communities. That's um, right. For uh, the providing them with the clean water. So uh, we have one in Pahang, Kampung Binjai. And the other one is in Goping, Kampung uh, Ulu Geruntung. Right. So uh, what we have done so far is we have um, visited both communities a couple of times, um, spoke to the, uh, the the head of the community. Um, that's important because um, we want to make sure that um, the the head of the community understood what we're trying to do, um, and and that we are we are there to address that issue. And we have also met up with um, the communities in uh, Kampong Ulu Gerentum in Gopeng. Uh, basically get talking to them, as I mentioned, having that conversation to understand uh, what are their plights and uh, how are they, how, are, how, how, how they want to improve their, uh, their water. Right. Uh, so we have also collected uh, water sample from both communities. Okay. And that's very important because <coughs> Uh, the water filtration system uh, would 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 work uh, with with certain kind of water, so so this result of water tests you know was passed to uh, Reviva, the company who designed the water filter, I see. so that they they are sure that you know this is the right filter to use, uh, and there's there's no other you know issues with the water. Um, so so uh, at this point we are. Uh, discussing with the communities about the location um, of the water filtration system. Right. The most convenient location. Yeah, the most convenient. That's important because, um, for example, in Kampong Binjai, right. uh, the communities doesn't live together in one place. Right. They're scattered. They're scattered. I yeah. See. They right. have uh, three different clusters. And if you walk uh, between these classes, it's like 15 minutes, you know, distance. Oh, wow. Distance. Okay. Yeah. That's considerable, especially with water to carry. Exactly. And, and a lot of time, it's a woman who carries this water. That's right? true. Yeah. Yes. So, so you want to consider um, the location well so that they would, uh, would not think that it's too much of an effort right. um, to collect this water. So, um, and there are some other technical issues of, you know, how do you... Uh, bring the water up from the well okay. and create uh, enough pressures and all that. So we are in, a, in a process of addressing some of this issue and moving forward <coughs> um, once these issues are being addressed we are going to um, install the filter doing groundwork install it in, in June and July. Right, in yeah. June and July itself. Yeah. Right. Mm. So that will also be in conjunction with the water bottle sale campaign conducted exactly. by Laneige. Yeah, right. yeah. So the water full sharing campaign by Laneige, um, it's, it's for three months from May to uh, end of July. So anyone can purchase uh, this uh, water bank uh, limited edition water bottles 
Uh, for 10 ringgit, uh, if you actually purchase any, any of the water bank products, or 40 ringgit without uh, the purchase of the, the, the water bank products. Right, just yeah. as a sort of a small gesture, yeah, a yeah. number towards the yes, figure. Yes, so right. the, the fundraise will go uh, into these two communities uh, in, the, in the purchase of the water filtration system um, and other accessories that is needed, um, like the, the water tank, um, the, the f building of the foundation, the fence and so on. Right. Okay. Mm. So that sounds like um, a very, I would say, an ambitious as well as a good-hearted initiative. Now, uh, what is it that uh, the Global Peace Foundation Malaysia hopes to inculcate um, through these current efforts with yeah. the Waterfall Campaign? Right, right. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the Global Peace Foundation uh, is, is, is here uh, to promote uh, values, the values right. of being compassionate, the uh, values of uh, being able to live for others, um, and the uh, values of also developing empathy. Right. So uh, we look at this project as not just um, helping these two communities, but to also create awareness. I think generally Malaysians are, are very generous at heart. Right. Um, so, so bringing this awareness that there are people in Malaysia uh, who are still struggling um, every day of, of finding clean water to drink and to cook, uh, it's, it's, I think it's a very important step um, because if everybody, you know, just donate a little bit, right? Um, you know, in, in Malay, you have sedikit sedikit lama lama jadi bukit. So, That's right, so okay. everyone just have to contribute a small part. And you'll be amazed at how much uh, difference we can make in, in other people's life. That's yeah. right. And I'm sure there are also <coughs> people out there who are keen to volunteer their time. Right, yes, exactly. Yeah, it, so, so if you're one of them, uh, you want to volunteer your time, your effort, um, you, you could uh, you know, uh, contact us uh, from our, our website, Global Peace Foundation uh, Malaysia. Uh, or talk to us on our Facebook, right? Um, so that we could inform uh, you on when is the right time that you can come into the project, and what kind of uh, contribution you like to offer. Right. Um, there is also a website that uh, is created to uh, just for this campaign. Okay. And uh, this website is called ourvillagewater.com. So uh, you can get more information about the camp the, the project um, and uh, you can always contact us if you would like to also donate cash directly um, for the benefit of these communities. Right, wonderful. So there you go for all our viewers out there listening and just wondering, okay, how do I get in on this aside from just purchasing these very cute um, water bottles? Mm. What you can also do is give your time or give any other expertise that you may have on the Facebook page. So there's Global Peace Foundation Malaysia. You can just type that into your search results on yes. social media and it should come out. Yes, definitely. Right. And um, till when will the water mm. bottles at least be available for for sale? Uh, this will be until the 31st of um, July. Right. And um, uh, Laneige is doing a great job um, by uh, making this available in, in all major shopping malls, right. in their outlets. Uh, they do set up booths as well. I see, right. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, if you, on a weekend, if you go to shopping mall, okay. you know, I'm sure you can uh, find out where they are. You can also go to the uh, uh, their fan page uh, mm -hmm. to get more details. Right, yeah. okay. So there you go. So concurrently, the campaign is of course running on the Global Peace Foundation Malaysia's platforms as well as on Laneige Malaysia's. Right. So it does sound like um, this is going to be um, a campaign that is ongoing even past the completion yeah. of the wells themselves as well as the filtration system. Yes. But when do you expect the filtration systems would ideally be available for use to the villagers? Oh, well, um, as uh, mentioned, we are planning to install them uh, towards uh, end of June and, and July. So the installation wouldn't take uh, long. It would probably take us two weeks to uh, do the, the groundwork right. um, and, and then address all the technical issues. So by August, um, this community should be able to 
uh, enjoy uh, safe and clean water. That's right. And, and uh, if you know, if you if you're volunteering with us, you'll be able to go uh, uh, to visit them uh, right. to hear their feedback. And, uh, to see the impact on their life. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And okay. also, also, this is not a one-time work um, because we need to go back from time to time to just hear them. Is it working well? Is there any issues? So it's going to be an ongoing uh, uh, project. Right. Okay. So that's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Tay. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. So this has been Tamina Kalsji, myself for The Nation, with Dr. Tay Suthai, CEO of Global Peace Foundation, Malaysia. Thank you so much and please do support the initiative. We'll see you again next time.